Joseph Kohler. I remember you many years ago in a bath tube dressed like a Monopoly man. <laughs> yes, that was for Rummy Cub. Uh, the idea was to get a bit of uh, publicity for Rummy Cub. It worked very well. It went yeah. all around the world on television, uh, even shown on transatlantic flights to America. Wow, fantastic. And for from that moment on, you have become uh, one of the main uh, people in the organization of the Mind Sports Olympic. You are the chief arbiter. What uh, you can uh, tell us? Something special? Yes, well, the Dan Glimner from Sweden was the chief arbiter and yeah. he ran the poker tournaments. He decided to go to help his wife and uh, they asked me to run the poker. And then they said, well, would you take over as chief arbiter as well? And so I took on his role, which means, of course, I can only keep 50% of the people happy because whatever I say, somebody says, thank you. And everyone <laughs> says, I don't like that. <laughs> yeah. uh, let's say, in my opinion, uh, um, there is room uh, to improve uh, the Mind Sports Olympia. And uh, uh, I would like to know what you think about it. My, my idea is that uh, every tournament should have written rules posted in the website long before the event. We yeah, have. That, that, that would be a little less flexible, but more, uh, let's say... Well, we uh, have suggested this in the past, and for one reason or another, it has not happened. We've gone so far with it and, and it has never gone through to completion. But I agree with you completely. There should be written rules and those are the rules you go by. And if you find for some reason the rule is unfair, well, that's too bad because you cannot say, oh, well, we'll change that because the tournament must go according to the rules. By all means, change it for next year, but you cannot change it for the tournament you're yeah, running. Yeah, that should be, that should, for me, Let's say I love this event because it's a, a unique thing, a, a unique possibility to play every kind of a game. But with this not expensive improvement, would be much more enjoyable to me. It would be much more enjoyable. And as I'm sure you are aware, Dario, there are constantly arguments over tie breaks, whether this tie break should be used, that tie break. And is it fair because I beat him, but he's been given the silver and I only got the bronze. We have all these problems. And it really does boil down to trying to make it as clear as possible. And no matter what system we pick, every year, in hindsight, oh, we should have thought of that, something else comes along. But yeah. we are trying. It's only mm. taken us 18 years. We might get there in the end. <laughs> I think it's possible to, 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 to improve. No, no, it's not so difficult. If the point is, Mind Sports Olympian, have some general rules for tiebreak, okay? Yes. But every game is different, and every game has some special uh, uh, rules, particular rules for that special tiebreak. This is what causes it, the problem. I think everything should be written before the tournament, and the arbiter should be able uh, to know before and to solve immediately the cases because everything has to be clear. Mm. Yeah. Well, after this event, I've had so many things thrown at me about tie breaks, etc. I am, over the next two or three months, going to be going through games and trying to work out what I think should be done so that each game yeah. has its own tie break. Yeah. For example, a couple of years ago, Ethan asked me to write the rules mm. in four or five games. I don't say that they are the best rule, but as far as they accepted, should be applied. Well, one of them was a worry, and I looked at those rules and I mentioned them, approved them, and I said, yes, this is the way it should be done. And yet nobody seems to know where these rules are. Yeah. And that, that... I have a copy of the rules myself, yeah. but they don't appear and on the website. For example, this of the worry is one of the main problems that occurred in this event this year, because uh, Ricardo uh, knew about the rule has changed just one minute before the tournament. Okay, maybe it's better this, this way, but one player has to know before. Of course. And uh, he decided this year has been decided that Grand Slam was not allowed. That's right. And they when it's when it's uh, some player make Grand Slam is 
will be forfeited, mm -hmm. and the opponent of Ricardo made a grand slam and was not forfeited. <laughs> Well, there we are. And then Glenda, of course, said, no, no, he can play the Grand Grand Slam, but does not get forfeited. So she is a very good authority, but that's not the yeah, point. That's true. It, it depends what the rules are. Yeah.